People say everything will expire someday. Toothpaste tube will become empty. Jeans will be worn. Oreo can no longer be tasty. Ketchup will go even sour. The past will be oblivion. But there is one lady in New York. When she stares at things, Milano cookies. That was my favorite as a kid. They will be stoned forever. Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Robin Antar from Brooklyn, New York. I sculpt everyday American icons out of stone. This is heavier than a real shoe. Mm -hmm. American icons recording in history. 2,000 years ago, who knows what a, a denim jacket will look like, if there will be a denim jacket. But this jacket behind me is a recording in, hi in history. You're taking the mundane object that nobody thinks about. Nobody thinks about potato chips and pretzels and Heinz ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise. Nobody thinks about these things. And then you take them and you're blowing them up larger than life and you're making them in a, you're carving them out of an object that's going to last far beyond your lifetime. I could hang out in this house for weeks on time. And if I don't have to go out and buy food, I'm fine. You know, I just stay home and I work. That's the mask you wear. And you connect it to here, and that gives you air when you're working. The idea that I can make a, a stone, a block of stone, look like a real object. That's what I want people to get because this is something realistic and you have to be controlled and you got to do symmetrical and the forms and the shapes and the shadows. But while you're carving this realistic piece, you have to be centered and you're thinking of aesthetics. That, that's how the canvas is now. This is right. This thing wants to come in like this. My first objective when I was younger was to make a hard object look soft. Take the stone that's hard, make it look like a soft ribbon twisting around. So when I do American icons, what I attract are clothing, jacket, jeans, hats, bags of cookies, because these are soft objects. So what I go after when I go to the supermarket and I scout out objects to carve, I look for soft objects and what is America is known for and I paint the logo on it and then the Milano cookies and my sculpture are sitting in the same room next to each other. I walk in there, I got to take a double take of which one's a real deal. I know I'm successful. I was a kid, I was very quiet and very shy. And it wasn't until later on in life when I, when I got the confidence in my work that I got out of my cocoon and got out of my shell. I've been sculpting since I was 15, 16, in 1974. I took a sculpture class in high school, and the minute I started sculpting, I was addicted. I just love it. I was born blind in one eye, and I didn't know it until I was 16. I found out, 16, maybe 17, 18 years old, I did about four or five sculptures depicting being blind in one eye to express my fascination of basically how I didn't know this and all of a sudden I knew it. Well basically I express my, what I see visually. I, I express it from, the visual, from looking from the inside out. 
most people express things from the outside in. In other words, what do I see and what is in my immediate line of vision? Here are my eyes, I'm looking out. What do I see? I see my hair, I see my nose. My nose becomes magnified, especially when you lose total darkness in this side, this becomes magnified. I consider it a gift from God. If I, I, it's not that I want to sculpt, I have to sculpt, I have to express myself. <laughs>